But suddenly, when you go to WD50, you're cooking your, your own food, obviously, and it's totally different than what you have learned. So what, what happened in your mind at that time? Well, I mean, I feel like it was an evolution. I mean, I was, again, trained classically, but I saw these people thinking a little bit differently, a little bit left, a little bit right of the middle. It wasn't classic French food. It wasn't classic European style food. I knew how to cook. I knew how to roast a chicken, how to poach an egg, but I didn't know why. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know why. What, what's, what's happening to an egg while it's cooking? I was looking for more answers, and so as I began to look for more answers, I needed to go outside of the industry. I began to discover that there were other food scientists out there. So Hervé Thys was Hervé a scientist, Thys, and, uh, and, you know, and he and a group of, of scientists were interested in understanding these answers to these questions as well. I mean, you went to the scientists yeah. and, and worked with them, or you went, because at the same time, I believe uh, Ferran Adria was doing the same in Spain, right? He was, absolutely. So Ferran Adria was trained um, in conventional kitchen. One day, he, he switched his style of cooking and he worked with scientists. He created a new, completely new way uh, of cooking using science in terms of technology, uh, in terms of ingredients. It's information that we can all benefit from. It's not just yes. for fine dining, it's for everybody. And that's why it's useful. Yeah, egg? let's cook some okay, eggs. So we, so so we, we need, have the timer, right? Yeah, so we have a timer. So five, four, five. That's our... Five, four, five, so okay. So we're going to drop our eggs in here. You're going to press uh, the yellow button. Okay, let's go. Vas-y. And now we have five minutes and 41 seconds. Yeah, so... So you, you work with a scientist. We work with a scientist right now who's a specialist in eggs, and he's helping us learn about eggs. Really? Yeah. Did you also... Uh, uh, Go in training in some other kitchens. I've done some stages in my life. I staged yeah. for Mark Winot. I, th I think people don't realize how creative he was. I remember to this day, this is the first time I saw sous vide. He had a big rotisserie. He put a matignon of ham and carrots in a bottle, and then he put halfway with beans and consomme, and he hung them in front of the rotisserie. Cook slowly like that. The beans were cooking in a bottle. And then I, you have to break the bottle. No, you just shake them out. And they come out. Yeah. Sometimes the bottle would break, which was a little scary. Yeah. When, when you're in the service and bah! Classic. I would have never think of that. In a very traditional kitchen, they were yeah. doing some interesting things. I, it, fine, it left yes. an impression on me a long time ago. Oh, we had zero. No, nine seconds. <laughs> oh, is it going to ring? It's going to ring, yeah. Okay, good. And then you press the yellow one again when it rings. When it rings? Yeah. I kind of like it. There. Fine. Done. Perfect. And so We're then you put them right, in ice. Right into the ice. And because you want to obviously stop the we cooking. We want to stop the cooking. The cooking. This is going to have a, uh, a nice firm white and the yolk is going to be runny. And it's going to be easy to be peeled. I hope so. <laughs> well. I, I always recommend you do a couple extra. I think it's up to the individual to decide how deep they want to go into the process. I feel a certain responsibility to know as much about what I'm doing uh, as possible. The approach is very scientific, so it has to be very precise. We're weighing things out. To the gram. You have to weigh to the gram. We weigh things to the gram. I mean, I, I still cook uh, traditionally. I came in, into cooking because it was tactile, very instinctive uh, to, to do so. I'm always afraid that if, if I go in the direction where you went, I'm going to lose that pleasure of touching the food, being in, uh, uh, connected to the food. I think that's a misconception that people think that we're like, you know, taking the romance out of it. We're just trying to understand things a little bit better so we can make better decisions when we cook something. And some of these pieces of equipment allow us to be very precise. If you, if you bring too much discipline for me in a scientific way, I think my ADD kicks and I cannot cook. Yeah, but you'd be surprised. I mean, when you make pasta, you have to follow certain steps. When you fillet a fish, you have to follow certain the steps. Techniques. The I mean, techniques. The basic techniques. But, it, it, and at some point I just said, okay, why? Why do I have to do it this way? And then from knowing why, you decided to cook some very original food that didn't exist before. Well, once we had that, that understanding, we could then apply our creativity to that knowledge. When you make a consomme, which is a broth, it's cloudy. The idea to clarify the consomme is to make it very clear. The way you make consomme is very different than the way I would make consomme in a classic way. In classic cooking, you, you do the raft. In a classic raft, you take egg whites. If you're clarifying chicken, you can take chicken stock. You can add some chicken meat, ground, ground chicken, into your raft. As the egg whites begin to cook, they settle on the surface and what we refer to as a raft. But in this case, what we've done is we've taken a ch uh, chicken stock, some classic sherry, and we put it in a centrifuge. In a centrifuge? A like centrifuge, yeah, it spins like, around. Yeah. And in about 30 minutes, we take the consomme and the sherry and we separate, because it spins so fast that the solids go to the bottom. 
The problem sometimes with the raft is it has to be hot. What if yes. you want to clarify a juice? Now we can clarify raw carrot juice and just have a different flavor. Ah, very interesting. So yeah. we're using equipment to do things that maybe we couldn't do before or to understand things a little bit better, to give us opportunities. For us, that's what it's about. Just every now and then getting another, 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 thing, another, another idea. Piece another, of knowledge. Another bit of knowledge that can be applied, yeah. Do you, do you wanna- Should we do uh, some work? Yeah, yeah. All right. So what do you want me to do? I mean, we have to cut some shiitakes. Okay. And once they're steamed, we're going to dress them with a little vinegar and a little bit of sherry. Hello, I'm Eric Repair, host of On The Table, only on the Reserve Channel. If you like my show, hit the subscribe button below. And hit the thumbs up if you like my show.